Hi Diamond Girls, it's me Adrienne Everhart. Today I'm going to talk about how to get a man addicted to you, how to have those wonderful feelings of knowing a man is addicted to you and drawn to you and it is you above anyone else that he desires. It's really a wonderful feeling to have like no doubts that you are the woman a man cannot live really without. <laughs> so I'm now testing my audio. Sorry, there we go. So let's talk a little bit about what gets a man addicted. This is a live stream. And you will have that feeling that that man cannot live without you. And know that more than anything, you've got his heart all tied up. And it is a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Now, let's talk first about addiction because there are some positive and negative connotations to the word addiction. And addiction is ultimately about something that makes you feel so good, you do not want to live without it. And addiction can be positive and sustainable, such as having a really powerful, loving relationship with someone that it becomes like a healthy obsession that you and your partner's life together becomes a healthy obsession for you both, where you build family, friends, and a prosperous life together. And you're also going to be strong members in your society, which means you're showing up in this addicted love that's mutual. And your guy, with no doubts, is feeling like his life is so much better because you're part of it. And that's a big key in this and part of the tips I'm going to share with you. Now, I did save the best tip for last, so make sure you do stick around. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to take live Q&A. You can talk about getting back. You can talk about if you're just having a problem in your relationship with your husband or you're dating, whatever it may be. I'll stick around and take some questions from you. So again, addiction above all else means your life is better because you're in it. And at first, the guy maybe didn't see how good his life was with you in it until maybe you left or until it took some time. I'm going to talk about all of those steps. But once he got familiar with what it felt like to be addicted to you and have your love, he doesn't want anything else. You're the only person he can think about and desire and want to spend time with. So this is a very positive, strong addiction where the two of you can actually become stronger members in your community or your church, but definitely as a couple and with each other. So let's talk about my feminine energy tips about how to really get a man addicted to you, again, in a really positive way. Now, I teach all of these tips in my online courses, and you can check those out at my website, everheartcoaching.com. I have lots of courses. I have a private coaching group. And as always, if you're new to my channel, please do just take a quick moment and hit subscribe. This supports me and my channel lets me know that I'm helping you out. So let's start with my all-time favorite tip, which is something I call the slow burn. And the slow burn is really so genius because attraction and addiction, how they work in the brain is that sometimes it starts very small. Like you might have remembered at some point in time, just one cup of coffee was, you know, all that you needed in the morning. And then it became kind of unhealthy and you needed more coffee to sustain you. But usually, you know, it starts kind of small. So love, a healthy love addiction can begin the same way because again, at first, the man might not actually know you are the best thing that's ever happened to him. He might be caught up in so many other things and just not be able to see that. But the slow burn is what creates that feeling. So the slow burn is about building attraction slowly. Now, for those of you who you start dating someone and it feels amazing, he wants to see you every day of the week. And then around the three month mark, it kind of fizzles out sometimes a little bit later, but the guy comes on kind of strong and then it kind of begins to fade away or fade out. And that is such a prime example of how that slow burn is working in reverse. Now, look, even if you're married uh, or you're in a uh, marital type situation, 
when you get that time away from your partner and you go do your own thing, such as, you know, if you usually uh, always go grocery shopping together on Saturdays and then go to lunch to the same place or Monday through Friday, you always watch television after dinner. You can actually change this up and do some things that feel wonderful for you and create that slow burn atmosphere of I'm with you. I'm going to spend time with you. But for now, I'm going to be doing my own thing or I'm doing something else or I'm unavailable. So for those of you in dating situations, this allows this man to have a small little doses of your feminine energy and he notices it feels good. And if he gets it all at once, it feels really, really good, but then it can kind of wear off. So we're talking about building a really deep and lasting connection. And for those of you who are married, this is about giving that your husband or your partner a change in routine, a little bit of time, a little bit of space from one another, where it's in a very relaxed, neutral type of environment. And for example, your husband might come home and not know where you are in the house. Well, let him find you. Or you might go to run an errand and it's your instinct to always text him and let him know exactly where you're going and exactly where you'll be back. Well, once in a while, just wing it. Just try and do things unless you have some agreement that that's how you guys handle things. But try to wing it a little bit and say, you know, I don't think I really want to watch TV tonight. I want to go uh, practice my piano or I want to be in my sewing room. This is how you build that slow burn where they're like, well, when am I going to see you? Well, I thought we were going to watch TV together or whatever it may be. And they have that little bit of space. And for girls, you set the pacing on your dating life, not the guy. You set the pacing when he sees you, how much he sees you, and for how long he sees you. All right. So let's move on to tip number two. And this is about being warm and positive in your feeling body. So these are all feminine energy traits. Warmth is a huge one that I teach. Warmth is about I'm available for you. I'm emotionally here for you. I have a soft energy around me. I like to tell women to, to practice that warmth and that softness as if like you were out hiking in the woods and you come across a, a deer, you know, there in the forest, and you want to stop and look at this deer, and you don't want to scare it and startle it. And so just see how your energy would change when you see that animal that you don't want to scare. You can kind of soften your energy and, and quiet that energy and space around you. And that's what warmth is all about. I'm here for you. I'm available. I'm not just going to snap back and just tell you the first thing that pops into my mind. I'm going to breathe, take a few moments. I'm going to find something positive to say to you, and I'm going to be in my feeling body. Now, warmth is really about how you respond, but it's also your energy around you. It's this, I accept you just the way you are. So, so here's a good example. Let's say a man says, hey, I won't be able to see you tonight, um, even though we had plans. Well, you might think that warmth is going, well, I understand. <laughs> I'm going to be really nice, and I totally understand. That's actually not warmth. And in fact, that's a little bit of a lie. So warmth is authenticity, and a man cannot deny that authenticity. Men are much more perceptive than we give them credit for being. So I want you to think about warmth as your way to be so honest with a man that he sees you as an authentic woman instead of someone who's kind of tricking him, telling him you feel fine when you really don't. And he can begin to trust you, not only trust you as a person, but trust you with his heart. So a warm way that you could respond is number one, find what you're feeling in your body. And you might feel really, really disappointed. You might feel mad, you might feel upset, you might feel scared or insecure, or you might feel like, you know, he's not as into you as you're into him, and you, you begin to have a lot of doubts and things like this. But I want you to instead just find how you feel about that evening not happening without making it something bigger. And I have a video in my whiteboard series called The Parfait Method where it helps you figure out how to find out what you're actually feeling and not like what you're doing to manipulate a guy. So you might feel really just kind of sad that you won't be able to see each other. So warmth is, 
oh, I feel so sad that we won't be able to get together. And what's going on? Like, I'm here for you in a warmth way. I'm not here for you to be your therapist or fix what's going on, but I'm, I'm here for you in that. And then you can really hear the man out. Now, one of my longest relationships I ever had with a guy was where at first he was like, I just, I don't know what you want from me. I don't think I can give you what you want. And I said, listen, I want you to just take it all the time you need. There is nothing you that you need to give me. I am not expecting anything from you. I totally accept how you feel. So you see how that was warmth actually taking all that heat off of him. And I said, listen, I'll miss you and I enjoy dating you, but it's totally okay. So once I peeled off and all that pressure was off of him and he felt that warmth, got that got him addicted and really hooked to me. So much so that it was me who eventually ended that relationship. So the third one, this one is so much fun because so often we just say like, oh, like I want this guy. I want him hooked on me. Like I want all his love. But we don't really understand like what do we want to be doing with him? Like if we're going to be all hooked with him and in love with him, uh, what, what does that mean? What do we want? So get clear on your desires on this healthy obsession, this healthy addiction that you're going to have with this man. So for example, let's talk about the clingy guy that I was once with. He got so clingy and he was just always around and always wanting to do something with me. And do you, have you ever had a clingy guy for those of you in chat? You know what it feels like to have this guy who is just like pestering you and he's needy and you just kind of can't wait to get away from him and like, oh God, I can finally breathe, right? <laughs> so that smothered feeling is where you're not clear on your desires because you want someone to be in your life, but you don't want them to be at every corner you turn, right? So what do you want? Do you want someone to watch TV with at night, to cook a healthy meal together? Do you want someone to go to church with? Do you want someone who is spiritual, who wants to pray? Do you want someone who likes to take the same type of vacations? Someone who wants to garden with you? So when I met the man who became my husband, I was actually very clear on what type of life I wanted. And I wanted a life of freedom with my partner. I didn't really want a partner that was tied to a desk and nine to five and working for a company and was so super important with his career that he couldn't get away. I actually wanted someone who kind of had a career more like mine that was a little more flexible, more freedom. We can travel and help out, you know, balancing the household, not just it's so divided, but we're actually together as one. And that's exactly what I got. So I got very clear on my desires and what the day-to-day -day of that feels like. So what do you want from that addiction? What do you want from that addicted love? How do you want it to feel? Get clear on that, ladies. Trust me on this one, because you might think you just want that guy and you just want him back or you want him to be with you, but you want him to be with you doing what? Get really clear on that. So this next one, I talk about this in a lot of my videos which is about walking away. And I'm gonna talk about two types of walking away that really get a man addicted to you. Because if a man knows that there's a chance you may walk away, he's going to feel it. And so we go back to this mentality of addiction, which is this thing I really love might be taken away from me. So we've all gone to the beauty store and we bought our favorite lipstick. We have fallen in love with it. Then we go back to buy it. They don't make it anymore. It's sold out. They discontinued it. They retired that shade. How many times has that happened to you? Give me a thumbs up on this video if this has happened to you. So now you know that if you find a color you like, what do you do? You buy three of them and you put them like in the refrigerator or somewhere safe because you, that is your color. You want to keep it. So now when you find something you like, you know, you better buy another one because it might get taken away from you. So that kind of like that anxiety that this might leave me if I don't take care of it, if I'm not good to it, if I'm not responsible and careful with her heart, she might leave me. Now, how do you establish that without doing the following me? Without do the, doing the following, I'm getting ahead of myself. You can't really say, if you don't love me and treat me right, I'm leaving. I mean, you can, 
but that's going to be like really escalated. And so instead, if you start off the relationship with the terms and agreements, which is something I talk about in all my FEM programs, for those of you who are coupled, check out FEM Diamond. If you're new to dating, FEM for dating or FEM for relationships, they're all amazing courses. And how walking away is your superpower. The man loses so much when you walk away. But you don't have to go, you know what? I'm packing up. I'm leaving right now. I'm moving out. We're separating all of our money immediately. This is over. So you don't have to walk out like that. That's a breakup. But you can walk out. Here's a great way to walk away from a man. He tells you something that you're not into or displays a behavior. And you go quiet and you go, I just don't know. And that silence and that I'm sitting in my body and I'm feeling what I'm feeling. And you know what? I just don't know. I don't know so much anymore. I'm not sure anymore. I'm not confident anymore. And you're not like, hey, I'm going to make everything perfect. So we're in love. I'm going to do everything right. I don't want you to ever think I'm leaving you. No, instead, you have doubt. You have concern. So the terms and agreements are all about this is how our marriage or our relationship is going to work. We're gonna, this is how we're going to pay for stuff together and travel together. And this is how many times we're going to see each other a week. Now, I will tell you, early on, I had a term and agreement with uh, my partner, Jeff. And it was one of the reasons we broke up. And it was that, that he needed to kind of be away a little bit longer than what I was comfortable with. And I didn't like that because I was at the time, I have to tell you, I was having a lot of anxiety many years ago. I didn't like to be alone. I've told everybody before I have a little bit of separation anxiety. I did. And it was really difficult for me to go like several days knowing that someone was in another state and he needed to go be with his mother. She was sick, but I only wanted him to be gone like four or five days a week. Now, that might sound crazy selfish, but at the time, that was just where I was with my fear and my anxiety. And at first, he was like, uh, okay, this is something I can do. But then later, he was like, this is nuts. I can't be flying back four and five times a week. He's not as extravagant as I am about that. <laughs> about, you know, you just hop on a plane and you're somewhere in an hour. So what's the difference, right? So we actually ended up breaking up because he didn't feel like he could negotiate with me on that term and agreement. So whenever you have something that is like a line in the sand, this is important to me and, and not so much a boundary, but I want you to have, be open to being flexible with your partner and being able to say, you know, this is really important to me. But all of these things, I have a little flexibility, but I just want to make sure we're on the same page with each other. So if those terms and agreements ever change and your partner stops showing up for dates, he stops taking you out, he stops paying for things. If he breaks those terms and agreements, he isn't, it's been four weeks and you haven't seen him. You know, are we still in a relationship? So this is where you go back to those terms and agreements or terms and conditions. And you say, listen, when we were decided to be exclusive or when we decided to get married, this was the belief that we had. This is what we agreed to do. And I feel like these aren't showing up. And so then you're able to negotiate those, renegotiate those. And if they are not what you want, just like any contract you're about to sign, you can go, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with this. I don't know how I feel right now. I can't agree to that. I don't know. And then that's when you want to do something like go take a weekend away, go see your mom, go with a girlfriend out of town, or just get in your car and, and drive for an hour. Tell your partner you're going to be back in a little while. That's where you want to take that space away from him. Now, what this has to do with addiction is, again, anything that's in great quantity, that's readily available for you, there is an innate and selfish characteristic in humans where we take the thing for granted. And that does not produce addiction. When you've got a whole lot of something versus a little bit of something. Now, I don't want any of you to feel like you have to keep your guy, you know, 
playing these tricks on him and being manipulative or anything like that. This is actually about being smart because powerful dynamite feminine energy women such as yourself, we go all in. We have nothing to hide. We show all of our cards on the table. We're here to love you just the way you are. And so we kind of go all in. And again, anytime you show up with everything, the man gets like a little bit like, well, wait a minute. I didn't have to work that hard. He doesn't think it. It's innate. It's characteristics that are just in our DNA. And again, not all men, but most men, if you show up too clingy, full force too much, they get, they get scared, they lose interest, or they just take it for granted. So this last one about be willing to walk away is not a threat. It's something you can do in your emotional energy. It's something you can do with your physical space. It's something you can do with your words. It doesn't have to be something as big as like, I'm packing my bags and I'm leaving. And it is nothing you taunt. It is nothing you say, well, if you don't do this, I'm leaving. I'm going to walk away. It's not what it's about. All right, so let's talk about the last one. Uh, and I'm going to do a quick recap before we leave. This one is so super important. I do not talk about it enough. And I really don't think anybody else out on YouTube is sharing this with you all. And that is when you're happy, he's happy. And when he's happy, he's feeling good. So whatever you're doing, I want you to pay close attention to that. Whether it's him taking you to a concert, snuggling up with you to, uh, for a movie, or having some sort of special moment or time with him that you feel like is kind of normal. But for the guy, it is, it is some type of like memorable, warm feeling. So when you're impressed with a man, and when the man is kind of like feeling proud of you and feeling that communal, you know, you think about hunter-gatherers in the cave with, you know, huddling with the woman and bringing back the, the kill and being proud and showing everyone that's when men feel their best. So I want you to begin to pay attention to what actually makes your husband feel the best. Now, I tell you what, my mom is a pro at this. My stepdad can come in the house and say, oh, I, you know, I cleaned the carburetor on the mower and I got that new tire on the wheelbarrow. And my mom will be like, oh, that's good. I know you had trouble hauling those bricks. And so she kind of relates to him and, 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 and enjoys his enjoyment and whatever that is. So begin to notice when your partner says, wow, look at that, you know, car go by. And you're just like, all right, it's just a car or whatever. Or maybe you like cars like me, but you're able to go, yeah, oh, that's a hot color of yellow. And you're able to come in and let his joy be your joy. That is how you connect with a man. That is how you get addicted to him. Or sorry, he gets addicted to you too is that his joy is also part of your joy. You can find something relatable. Now, I will tell you, concerts are a big one for my husband. If I go to a concert with him, he wraps his arm around with me, and we're sharing that music. We're sharing that moment. Find those moments with your guy. When he is happy, you're happy. They're bonding moments. That's when you really get that intense bond and addiction. So ultimately, Addiction is about, I'm feeling good. When I'm with you, I feel so good. I do not want to be without you. And then the next part is the slow burn, which is, I don't get you as much as I want. I'm hungry for you. I'm craving you. Okay, so that's tip number one. Number two is being warm, positive in your feeling body. Don't just tell him, I feel sad. I feel mad. I feel angry. I feel upset. Oh, I feel so happy you did this. Oh, I feel so good. Oh, I feel really appreciative. You want to use way more of the positive I feels with your warmth, all right? The next one is get clear on your desires. You want this guy addicted to you so bad. What do you want to be doing with that addiction? What do you want it to feel like? What do you want to be doing? The next one is about being willing to walk away knowing how to express that in your energy and your vibe without just, you know, slamming the door on your way out. And then the last one is when he's happy, you're happy. Pay close attention to what makes him happy when he's with you. Pay really close attention to that. All right. We're going to open up some questions. Thank you, Pampered Goddess. She said, 
I really like your blouse. It is actually a dress, but thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna take some questions. Um, I'm gonna pop them up here on screen. So if you have a question, you know, keep it short and sweet. I'll do my best. Okay, Kim, how do you how do you deal with a guy that feels that feels you're out of their league? Oh, you bring me back, Kim. I had a guy that I would get dressed up and we go on a date and he'd go, wow, I feel like a little kid around you. I feel like a little kid. I'm in my, you know, billabong shirt and you're all dressed up and fancy. You know what? That is his problem. Because I used to say to this guy, I'm like, well, I'm sure you know how to put on a nice shirt. <laughs> I'm sure you know how to dress when something that feels good. Like it, that's your problem. And so if he's telling you he's out of your league, you can just say what you feel. Like, oh, that's so funny. Or, oh, that feels so sweet to hear you say that, but it kind of breaks my heart at the same time. So find a way to be warm. And uh, ultimately, this is his problem, not your problem. Oh, I love this question. How to embrace being alone till I, till I find a man I love. So. I teach a course called the ABCs to get him back and it should really be called like the ABCs to get you back because it is so about developing that rich, juicy, full life. And notice you said embrace being alone. And I want you to begin to, first of all, shift this a little bit differently because this is your life you're getting to live right now. This isn't just you being alone. This is me and my home and my life in my world. What do I want to do with it? Now, I will tell you one of the most depressing parts of my day used to be eating dinner and that wind down routine. I would have to do that alone. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to do something that feels good. I would invite someone over for dinner a couple of nights a week. I would go visit a friend at dinner. Sometimes I would go to just the movie theater or I would go walk in the park until the sunset. I would find people to talk to and things to do. And then sometimes when I'm finally, you know, home alone to have dinner, I'm like, oh, I get to cook this super healthy meal and just be me. You know, just be me. I can eat crab legs however I want to eat them. I can eat, you know, with my hands if I want to. I can read a book and, and have the television on at the same time. Like this is my world. So I want you to kind of embrace what feels really good to you that way. And change your language a little bit. Like I'm alone until I find that man. Well, you might be alone even when you find him. You're going to have alone time. So look into fem tools for dating if you can. Mia says, how do I cope with possibly not seeing him for two plus week? We're long distance. I want him to know I want to see him more, but I won't, don't want to be needy. Okay, so you're actually in needy. You are in an advanced course in neediness if you're in a long distance relationship. I couldn't do it. I have to be honest. I'm telling you, Jeff would have to leave for, you know, he needed to be gone for a couple of weeks to be with his dying mom. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I could now, but I couldn't then. And you got to know what you can do and what you cannot do. I cannot be in a long distance relationship. I cannot sit in another city and not go on dates, have movies, make love to you, wake up in the morning, have breakfast. I can't not do that with you if I'm in a relationship with you. So my answer about long distance relationships is always the same, which is one of you got to move closer to be with the other one. That is the answer for you. You have got to move closer to be with him, not necessarily move in. You might uh, want to get your own apartment or your own place. And you got to say, like, listen, this feels great. This feels wonderful. I want to give it a go. No pressure on you. I want to move there. I want to find a way. Or you need to start keeping your options open. Honey, I love you. I love seeing you every month and everything like that. But I need to keep my options open because I'm just, I want a different type of relationship than what I've currently got with you. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's see here. Kenya says, I struggle with not paying the check. I want a man who picks it up almost always, but many men expect you to split it. I feel bad 
sometimes, not even offering. But then when I offer, he accepts. Well, yeah, he accepts. And I don't know if you're in America or if you're in Europe or, or where you might be, but um, I think this can be different in different parts of the world. I will tell you, I had different types of men in my life, like from different countries. Um, I dated a guy from Russia for a while who was just disgusted and degraded that I even offered to pay for a check because it meant that he could not provide for me, right? And that's some men's energy. And then some men in America are like, I don't want to offend you. <laughs> you, you want to pay. So it's supposed to be modern times. And when a man is dating you, in my opinion, he's got to pay. Now, I will tell you, when I first uh, met Jeff, I was not interested in him like that. And so I would always want to pay because I was like, look, I don't want you getting the wrong idea. But then when things, you know, began to change for me, I was like, yeah, you know, this feels really good. I, it, sh it shows that he can provide for you. So that's what you're looking for with paying the check. And then also let your guy know if you're going on several dates. Like, yeah, it feels really good to know that, you know, I'm an old fashioned girl and this feels very traditional to me. It just shows that you're investing in me and it feels wonderful. And we don't always have to go to really expensive re uh, restaurants. We can go to the park some days. We can just go get a coffee another day. And when he comes over to your house, don't have the best food in the world to eat. Don't lay it all out for him. Keep him hungry. So when he shows at your house and you're like, hey, I made ribs and I've got this and that, the guy's not going to want to go anywhere. You need to show up and be like, I think I have some frozen corn dogs in the refrigerator. Let me check. <laughs> right? You don't want to lay out the red carpet for him. You want him to show you that he can provide for you. I hope that helps, my dear. And again, how often are you dating? How, how often are you going out with, these, with this guy? You know, are you getting to the point where we're having the terms and agreements, where we are in an exclusive relationship? Think about those things. Fem for dating is a really good one if you don't already have it. And Fem for Diamond is an advanced course. I don't talk about it enough, but you really want to go deep on feminine energy. I think it's about a five-hour uh, program to check that out. So, hey, you guys, um, if I'm helping you, I'm going to go for a little bit longer. If I'm helping you, please take a moment and hit thumbs up on this video. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. I would love to see your little thumbs up on here. Okay, on three love says, thank you, thanks you. I've been able to consciously be a safe space for my partner. Oh, heck yeah. What a wonderful feeling it is that there's not that tension or that aggression or that we are battling each other. There's just like the doors are open. It's a nice, cool morning. <laughs> you know, dew is in the air and it's just bright and sunny and warm. That's what it feels like. Okay. Ooh, how complicated. Brittany, how do you deal with a man who wants to do everything for you, but doesn't want to be with you and tells you he's not the man for you? Brittany. You got to listen to him. So there's a time to listen to a man and there's a time to not listen to a man. When do you listen to a man? When a man says, I love you, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, but I just can't be with you. I'm just not the man for you. I'm not right for you. I don't deserve you. You're so good. I don't deserve you. That's when you believe a man. If he's willing to tell you that stuff, that he's not the man from you, you go, okay, it's been nice knowing you. I don't need any more friends, unless you do, unless you do need him as a friend. Otherwise, it has been nice knowing to meet you. Thank you for all the charity work you've been doing for me. I hope you can write it off on your taxes, but I don't, I don't need any more friends. You got to get really clear with the universe and that man about what you want in life. Now, that's another type of walking away. You're so sweet. You've done so many wonderful things for me. Thank you. I got to say goodbye because I really want to call forth. I want to be a wife one day. I want to call forth a loving, long-lasting relationship that leads to marriage. Okay. Let's see what we have. A few new ones coming in. 
Uh-oh. Allie says, the man I've been seeing for a year and three months has pulled back the last couple of weeks and hasn't responded to me since the last time I reached out to him on Thursday, five days ago. Okay, this is when you write this man and say, hey, it's been five days since I've heard from you. I, you must be feeling, you know, really whatever you think he must be feeling, stressed, unsure, scared, nervous, whatever. You must be feeling really scared right now. I am too. I, I love you. I miss you. But I need to know if I am in a committed relationship with you. Yes or no. Because if he's like, I'm on pause, I'm on a break, right? We're on a break. I get to do whatever I want. No. Am I still in a relationship with you? Diamond girls get clarity. Just like a diamond, you get clarity. And you say, I need to know if we're still in a relationship. If he doesn't write you back after two or three days, you can say, I have accepted your silence as we are no longer in a relationship. I love you. I miss you. I am going to be boldly moving on. He has to know you're not going to be there. I've just walked away. I've just disappeared. Your favorite lipstick is now out of production. You don't get it anymore. That's when the guy starts banging on your door and coming back around and freaking out because he's just lost you. All right. And then you have to start the process of rebuilding. Okay. Rebuilding is not like, oh, honey, you're back. Let's make love. Everything's great again. No, it isn't. You're starting over again. And I teach you all of that in the ABCs to get him back. So check that one out, Allie. And I'm sorry, honey. I hated that feeling with the artist. The artist would come, come back and something would happen and I just don't hear from him anymore. And I'm crying every night. It was a horrible feeling. Never again. You are way too valuable for that. All right. This is a good question. And I'm going to take one more. After this, uh, how do I find, girl, Gorgeous Girl says, how do I find that balance where I'm not attracted to the man and not too avoidant? How do I find the balance of where I'm still vulnerable and open up to him, but I'm not clingy towards him? That is about limits, limits and boundaries. So how much time I'm spending with you, how much I'm thinking about you, how much I, am I living my life or am I like living sleepwalking through my life and just thinking about when I'm going to be with you? I talk about that like you have a magnifier glass and your energy is just super focused on that man and he can feel it. So, you know, if he texts you for every third text, you initiate a text is how I feel about that. There's so many more tips. I, I teach a lot of these in my other videos, but you want to be truthful and share, but not share everything. And again, this is that slow burn. This is about time. I recommend that women don't even get exclusive with a man until after the third month. Don't marry him until after a year. So see if you can't pace yourself and get a little bit more clear on limits. That means time, how much you're investing, for how long. For example, the guy calls me up. He wants to talk an hour on the phone. No, I'm available for 30 minutes. I once had a guy, I, I got on the phone with him and I said, hey, you know, it's great to get to talk to you. I want you to know I only have about 20 minutes tonight. He got totally mad and said, if you don't have all the time for me, you are not the woman for me. I said, see ya, because I don't. I'm not going to be like controlled and manipulated. Now, I don't think that he's doing that to you, but you, you, you get the gist of what I'm saying. This is about a limit on how much time I'm investing. All right. Okay. Shivani says, uh, if feeling on the receiving side is being a woman, it feels amazing. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, Kim says, you really need to listen to a man's words and pay attention to his actions. Absolutely. We are talking about actions, not words, because I maybe didn't finish that thought. There's when you listen to a man and when you don't listen to a man. When you don't listen to a man is when he's like, I love you. I want to be with you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I could, I could see us buying a house in this neighborhood one day. Like, oh my goodness, that's so lovely. Oh, that's so sweet. But you don't believe any of it until he comes through. 
He has to have the actions, all right? Okay, oh, this is a good question. How about not getting jealous when he occasionally looks at other women and sends arrows? Is he sending arrows in front of you? Oh, no, 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 no. So let's talk about sending arrows and let's talk a man about a man straight up disrespecting you being in his presence. So if a man is like to a woman in front of you, no, that's disrespect. We need to have respect in our relationship. I'm not feeling respected. I'm not feeling respected. It's that simple. You don't, you can feel jealous all you want to. Yeah, I feel jealous. I don't like this, but, uh, you know, it just doesn't feel good to me. I feel disrespected. And that's what you need to talk about is that feeling. Okay, I love this question. I'm in a relationship with a trans man. He's masculine, but sometimes I feel like he tends to be in his feminine energy. Any tips for me how to be more feminine? Now, I do love this question because I get a lot of emails and messages from trans women who are identify themselves as women and you think you've got trouble being in your feminine energy and maybe you were born female trans women also struggle with the same thing like knowing how to receive knowing when to be in their feminine and you know how to unzip their heart and be vulnerable without like hyper focusing on something you know um, and a lot of that comes from a for women biologically, because we want to care for a child and like hyper focus on that child, be completely aware of anything it may need at any moment. So a lot of that comes from there. But in your question in regards to a trans man, uh, focus on the masculinity that feels good and why, but also understand that all of us, whether we're trans, straight, bi, gay, pan, whatever it may be, however you neutral, gender neutral, you have energies in your body and you have a neutral energy and you have a masculine energy and you have a feminine energy. And if you're on this channel, there's a good chance you're a woman who is strong and masculine energy. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the relationship, when it comes to that energy exchange with a masculine source. So for example, Elena, doorbell rings at 3 a.m. Is he gonna get up and answer the door? Is he the one to do that, you see? Or if, if something kind of happens to y'all out in public, do you feel that energy like he's protecting you and things like that? So that's where you really want to focus in on, oh, this feels so good and I feel like you're princess and I feel so protected and cared for. And then the other times when you see those more feminine traits, see if you're not able to kind of balance them out a little bit and, and, and ration them. You know, I, I was watching a movie with my husband not long ago. And I thought it was a very cute movie. I thought it was very sweet. But it was by far having much more of an emotional impact on him than me. And I was trying not to like, you know, be whatever about his emotions because I would not want him to do that for me. But instead, like that's his moment to be in his feeling body. That's his time. Because when I need him to be that masculine, he's very, very masculine. So see if you can't balance it out a little bit. Okay, last question. I know I said that three questions ago. How to transition from friendship to being colleagues with a man? We used to be best friends. He's now my boss. It feels awkward when we disagree on everything. Advice. Hmm. I don't really understand your question. You were friends. Now you're colleagues. And you disagree. I see. I see. So not necessarily romantic, but you were friends. You know, that's a tough one because I've always been your friend. And I think friends disagree. They don't disagree on everything. And I have a feeling, Marsha, that you guys aren't disagreeing on everything. You know, everything. And pay attention to when you agree on something. Go out of your way to maybe create something that you both agree on. Like, hey, I, I brought, you know, I don't know, hummus to work to snack on. I know you love it and I love it too or whatever it may be. So we're agreeing on something. And you want to start that good ener energy vibing. Also, now that he's your boss, sometimes that brings out the ugly in people. Like they get power and it changes them. 
So be aware, maybe your friend has changes. I don't know. All right, everyone, has this video been helpful for you today? Have you enjoyed hearing about it? If so, be sure to share my channel, share this video with a friend, give this video a thumbs up, and definitely hit subscribe. I'm gonna sign off for now. Thank you all for opening up your heart with me, being vulnerable, and asking your amazing questions. Uh, sending you all lots of love today. Until next time, bye.